liebe Zuschauer, herzlich willkommen zu Market Insight hier von der New York Stock Exchange. Ich bin Manuel Koch und bei mir ist der NYC Einstein, Peter Tuckman, den wir ja schon von vielen Interviews kennen. Schön, dass Sie da sind. Thank you very much for joining us, Peter. So, uh, the markets are going a little bit up this week. What's the reason for that? So, look, the markets have been going up for a while. Let's go back to February where we saw the narrative change and things started to sell off. There's a spike in yields, bonds, whatnot, some geopolitical stuff going on and, and but basically the narrative has been a positive one for the last 16 months, right? Market is up. Are we off 10% off the highs, uh, you know, of right before of January? Absolutely. But we're still only about 2,000 points off that. And the, and the Russell is only 1% off the highs. So basically the narrative has been positive, earnings have been good, interest rates are low. We are seeing some things change and what happened last week was the whole narrative suddenly changed. They started talking about whether it came from a jobs report or not. I'm not really sure what really initiated it. Uh, I think it had to do with the Iran thing that was on the table. Uh, some wild card coming out of Washington. Um, and we saw the narrative suddenly go from, from very positive all worldwide to being sort of this negative, negative narrative, right? Where they started spinning a negative story about global growth, inflation, wage growth, you know, raising interest rates and how that was really going to change, how it would affect the financials and this and that. We st also, what, one of the things now that I remember that initiated the whole thing was the beginning of earnings season this quarter showed that even though there was a lot of anticipation that the financials were going to really kill it and do really well on all, on all sides, they posted good earnings, but the conference calls afterwards showed that there was some fragility in the financial market, that there was competition for deposits, that loan growth wasn't as robust as it should be. And so that while companies were posting solid earnings, whether it was the financials or consumer staples or whatnot, the guidance going forward due to tariffs, fear about China and whatnot, seemed to be that there were some headwinds in the marketplace coming, going forward, right? When we, when we announce earnings, it's what just happened in the last quarter. So obviously some of the narrative is changing and some of the reality is changing with Mr. Trump's policies with, um, with tariffs and that's a big deal, right? We don't even know how that's gonna come out. He threw out a big net that we're gonna lay tariffs on everybody, then he pulled it back and said everyone could renegotiate their own deal and then it was really against China and then we go into trade war with NAFTA and this and that. So suddenly last week the whole narrative changed there was problems with slowing global growth. There was problems with wage growth, inflationary, raising another interest rate on the table raise for June. And suddenly everything just got super negative for a moment, right? And it seemed odd because they love to spin that story. The press tends to do that. They grab a hold of a little thing and it, it morphs into a virus. Well, what happened was the market tells you what it really wants to do. We had two days that were down 350. But by the end of the days, we had big reversals, right? Whether it was headline related or you know, maybe the narrative wasn't right. Maybe they were just spinning a negative story. And that there always seems we're catching a bit in the market. We're down 2,000 from the all-time high. There seems to be still a lot of value that investors feel is in the marketplace. So suddenly, the and they kept telling this story about the five days, we haven't had five down days in so long, and we've never seen it down April and since 2005, and la, 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 all this stuff, but the market just rebuffed a lot of it. Now, we're in, the, in this week here in May, Right? And then there's also this postulate that says you sell in May and go away, right? That's an old Wall Street. It hasn't really come to fruition for years. Once again, it's not coming to fruition this year. These last five days we've been up. Every big sell-off has been a great buying opportunity. Today, the whole narrative changed back because we've had two or three back-to-back triple-digit positive days. So what changed from last week's negative or what changed from the whole last 16 months of positive? Global growth is in fact not slowing down. Wage growth is kind of tepid, so that means it's less inflationary. Well, will there be an interest rate raise on the table for June? Very possibly, but at the end of the day, it's still a couple, we're only a couple points in on, on interest rates. So it's still, if you know, the market's still up double digits for the, we're up small for the year, but over the last 16 months, everything's up double digits. 
So I have to translate now everything oh my God. into German. I'm sorry about that. I should have said it to you in German. <laughs> Nein, aber ich über ich uh, mache mal eine kleine Zusammenfassung, was Peter gesagt hat. In den letzten 16 Monaten ist der Markt natürlich nach oben gegangen, auch wenn wir ungefähr 10 Prozent von den Allzeithöchstständen wieder zurück sind. Und in der letzten Woche da gab es so einen kurzen Tiefpunkt, weil gerade die Banken und Finanztitel zwar gute Zahlen vorgelegt haben, aber in die Zukunft ein bisschen pessimistischer geguckt haben. Die Wall Street ist aber aus diesen zwei schlechten Tagen trotzdem wieder dann auch positiv nach oben gegangen. Und in fact, sagt Peter, sieht es gar nicht so schlecht aus, denn die Wirtschaft und die Wirtschaftsleistung, das Wachstum ist auf jeden Fall nicht schlechter geworden. So I tried my best to translate okay. that very quick. Um, so when you do a little future outlook and not even the banks, is your feeling when you're here on the floor that anything changes in a negative way or in a positive way? You know what, uh, it, it's funny how headlines can change Uh, uh, short-term perception, then we must really evaluate. And you, you're seeing, seeing markets intraday moving hundreds and hundreds of points. In the big picture, that's not a big deal. We really need to look if the fundamentals have changed. Right now, markets seem strong, right? Yes, earnings have been good. Yes, some guidance, there are some headwinds. But there's still a lot of unknowns. But it's, the mar you know, these guys always joke with me. I always say the market's doing what it wants to do. The bottom line is when it goes up, that means people are putting money to work, right? People find value. I'm a trader, I'm not an investor and I'm not an analyst. So I don't really know what their, what their, their mindset is. But at the end of the day, if we're up 250 and we're up 1,000 points since last Thursday, that is a function of people putting fresh money in the market. So they must find value, right? Otherwise they would wait for this big sell-off that people chat about but has not happened. So für Peter als Trader hier ist ganz klar, wenn die Märkte nach oben gehen, dann machen sie auch das, was sie wollen praktisch. Und wenn man gut 1000 Punkte in einer Woche nach oben geht, ist das für ihn ein klares Zeichen, dass auch die Aktionäre, die Anleger das positiv sehen. So uh, for you at the moment, uh, do you think we can see more all-time highs this year? You know what, it really, it does, it feels that way. You know, at the end of the day, interest rates, you know, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't remember it, but you know, historically, over the last 20 years, interest rates has been as high as 18%. 2% is not a big deal. You know, the zero interest rates since the crash of 07, 08 have fueled this marketplace. At the end of the day, 2% interest rates in a market that's going up 20, 30% a year is still a good, good scenario. So do, you know, um, and the market tells us that there seems to be value. They're buying it here. Real money is being invested in the market. So, look, we're not, you know, could something derail this market? You know, we've seen that potential problems with North Korea derailed it temporarily. That seems to be making, you know, uh, stabilizing. Uh, the wild China tariff idea and the White House's relationship there seem to derail the market temporarily, but still we don't know. Still a lot of unknowns with that. But at the end of the day, I think that will work itself out. Now, what's the new wild card on the table is the Iran oil, Middle East potential crisis. Could there be a war pending in this situation? It seems like something could be happening. Is that making the market uh, 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 edgy and sketchy and nervous? It doesn't seem that way because we're in the middle of it now, right? We've pulled out of a deal. Israel's been striking Syria. The Iranians are striking Israel. There's fire in the, uh, you know, in the oil fields over there right now. Oil is at the highest it's been since 2014. That tends to stay, you know, sometimes oil trades in concert with the market, sometimes it trades inversely. The market's sort of following suit. The energy stocks have rallied big time. So um, in a long answer to your short question, yes. Ich habe äh, Peter also gefragt, sind äh, neue Höchststände hier an der Wall Street möglich? Und er hat gesagt, ja, das ist möglich, denn wir sehen, dass viele Krisen, wie zum Beispiel auch der Handelsstreit mit China oder Iran, Israel im mittleren äh, Osten, dass solche Sachen momentan zwar in Krisenmodus sind, aber doch hier irgendwie abperlen an der Wall Street und auch die US-Notenbank FED, wenn sie die Zinsen leicht erhöht auf möglicherweise 2 Prozent, dann ist das ja immer noch historisch gesehen ein sehr niedriger Stand und die Märkte werden das verkraften. So, Peter Tuckman, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. NYSE Einstein hier bei uns bei Market Insight. Danke Ihnen. Schauen Sie auch gerne auf die Webseite gkfx.de.